Good evening, and thank you for coming to class. My name is Joseph P. Scarano. I'm a registered nurse with my BSN, and tonight we're going to be discussing the use of the Vane Viewer Flex. Tonight we're going to be discussing the Vane Viewer Flex in more detail and elaborate on more concepts that weren't covered in the previous class. At this point, I hope all of you completed your pre-tests which were provided to you. This will be a good guide for you to see where you can learn from tonight's presentation. The Vane Viewer Flex is a non-invasive, handheld electronic visual aid. It's used to detect superficial blood flow under the skin. It's effective in neonatal, pediatric, and adult patients. The Vane Viewer Flex is used to image subcutaneous blood patterns on the surface of the skin. It's able to see veins, bifurcations, valves, as well as blood flow throughout the vessels. The way it works is it uses NIR, or near infrared light. It's very similar to the pulse oximetry that we use on the floor to gain patients' pulse oxygen levels. It can see a depth up to 10 to 15 millimeters below the skin. The way that the machine works is the near infrared light is projected onto the skin and the hemoglobin absorbs this light sending the information back to the computer into the machine and then sending a live feedback directly back onto the skin so it's live data. It works by running on a 9 volt rechargeable battery. It has about 2 hours of battery life when fully charged and the estimated recharge time is about 4 hours. On the display monitor at the very top of the machine you will see a series of buttons. Here you will visualize that I've labeled the icons so it makes it a little more convenient for you to see. Power button, status indicator, which shows the amount of battery life, resize button, which gives you different views, max brightness, which just increases the light, image capture button, is an interesting feature which allows you to take live pictures and send them to your computer so you could show it to your other coworkers. And the image button gives you more fine detail views. Proper use of the vein viewer flex. Ensure that the patient is in a comfortable lying or sitting position and dim the lights in the room to ensure that the near infrared light can be viewed comfortably from where you're sitting. Choose the arm that you wish to work with carefully, ensuring that there's no valves or bifurcations in the way of the IV insertion site. Turn the machine on and make sure that it's no more than 10 to 12 inches from the patient. This is key for the near infrared light to be optimally viewed from the practitioner standpoint. Some tips that can help you in gaining IV access are active warming, which is the use of a hot compress or a heating pack to help bring the veins close to the skin and dilate them so that they're easier to see and palpate. The tourniquet technique is frequently used by applying a rubber band tourniquet four to six inches above the insertion site. Gentle tapping can also be used to help dilate the veins. Remember not to be too rough or slap the area because this can damage the vein and compromise it. Prior to entering the patient's room, ensure that you gathered all of your supplies, performed good hand washing technique, and don clean gloves. Apply the tourniquet and select the vein that you wish to work with, cleansing the area and ensuring that it's completely dried. Remember the device cannot be used to detect deep vein thrombosis or diagnose. However, it can be used to check for patency. It can also be used to see if the vein infiltrated or a hematoma has developed, which would require the removal of the intravenous device. I'm now going to show you a brief demonstration of the proper use of the vein viewer flex. The patient's wrist was tied off with a rubber band tourniquet and the machine was turned on so that I could see the near infrared light on the patient's hand, which displayed his veins. I chose the largest vein on the patient's hand and palpated it, which showed good rebound. I then inserted a 22 gauge cannula into the patient's hand. Upon seeing flashback in the cannula, I further advanced it into the patient.
Placing my thumb above the cannula ensures no blood flow will occur, and then I then attach the secondary tubing. Once attached, you need to release the rubber band tourniquet, otherwise you will compromise the vein. I then flushed with three milliliters of normal saline and good patency occurred. After removing the three milliliter normal saline, I saw that blood flow occurred through the cannula, which just further demonstrates that there is good patency with the intravenous device. I wanted to further check the patency, so I attached a 10 milliliter normal saline syringe to the end of the hub and flushed. If you look closely, you will see the near infrared light disappears at the top of the patient's wrist, which just further demonstrates good patency. Once good patency is shown, you can secure it to the patient's wrist, and now the intravenous device is ready to be used for IV antibiotics or IV hydration. The vein viewer flex can be used in most aspects of nursing care where venipuncture or intravenous devices need to be accessed. Such areas include oncology, nephrology, NICU, PICU, or just simple everyday office blood draws. The implications of the use of the vein viewer flex have been shown to have decreased hospital costs by limiting the amount of PIC lines that needed to be inserted. Over a nine-month study, it has shown to save a hospital over $180,000. It also showed the first attempt success rate increased from 49% without using the vein finder to 80%. Further implications of the vein viewer flex shows that it decreases the average number of attempts average time needed for venous access, and increases the first attempt success rate. Moreover, it shows improvements have led to an increase in patient satisfaction, as illustrated in the graph below. In conclusion, the vein viewer flex has been found to increase patient safety. Medical professionals are now able to assess IV patency more frequently in a non-invasive manner. It's also been found to increase patient satisfaction. Let's face it, the less amount of times a person has to be stuck, the happier they are. It's also been found to decrease hospital costs by limiting the amount of unnecessary pick lines that are inserted into patients and increasing the nurse's first attempt success rate. This decreases the amount of IV kits that are wasted on a second and third attempt. I want to thank you all for coming out to my presentation this evening and taking the time out of your day to listen. If you have any further questions about the subject matter, please feel free to contact me. Remember to take the post-test which was provided to you, and also remember to log into tonight's discussion board and reflect on the subject matter that was covered. I want you to all remember to take what you learned in tonight's lecture and bring it into your practice.